Throughout this video, I'll probably be checking my notes, but that's because this is a very difficult topic and I want to make sure I'm covering everything correctly. I've always been confused about how raw recording actually works and specifically how ISO works with adjusting exposure. And I've never needed to understand those intricacies until recently. Because most of my work is shot with the Canon C200 in standard, non-RAW recording formats, my idea of how ISO functions has been consistent since when I learned it back in college, where an increase in ISO equals an increase in exposure, with the idea being that you can actually adjust your white and black point in the image. For example, if you have a value in your image that isn't at 100 IRE, or 100 on your zebras, you can actually push it to 100 IRE with just an ISO adjustment, while keeping shutter and iris the exact same. That's demonstrated in this quick video that I shot on my iPhone of the Canon C200 monitor with zebras set to 100. As you can see, as I'm adjusting only the ISO, I am adjusting values that weren't at 100 and then become 100 with only an ISO adjustment. And theoretically, I'm also adjusting dynamic range. Let's say the sensor has 13 stops of dynamic range. If I'm able to increase all of the values in that image to pure white to 100 IRE, I've decreased it from 13 to 1. That is an actual adjustment of dynamic range. Conversely, you could say the same about black point. If you have values in your image, that are black and you want to pull them out of black, you could do that with just an ISO adjustment with standard non-RAW recording formats. And this is a pretty standard way of talking about ISO in the original idea of how ISO functions in the exposure triangle to say that it actually decreases or increases your shot's exposure would be correct in this regard, even if it does it artificially. Even if it is not actually adjusting your sensor's sensitivity to light, it is actually boosting values in a way that if they're pushed to 100, they're not recoverable by, you know, decreasing ISO in, let's say, an editing software. However, all of that ISO talk changes when you're talking about raw recording formats. So in raw, the only thing that adjusting ISO is doing is shifting where middle gray is sitting, nothing else. So if you have a section of your image that is too bright or too dark, you can't rely solely on ISO to fix it. You have to rely on your aperture, shutter speed, or the amount of light you actually have on set or in your scene. So this is demonstrated in this video that I'm showing now. As ISO increases, you can see that nothing is happening in terms of dynamic range adjustments. The only change is where middle gray is mapped at that given ISO. And once again, when I'm talking about dynamic range, I am talking about the white and black point in the image. Those stay consistent when you adjust only ISO in raw recording formats. And it starts to become more confusing when you consider how DaVinci Resolve can process these raw files. Because Resolve offers the flexibility to change your ISO in post-production, it almost doesn't matter what ISO you pick when you're recording in RAW, as long as you're monitoring your white and black points in your image. So you might ask, why would you ever need to adjust your ISO when you're recording in RAW formats? Well, for one, it helps you view the image on your monitor if you're sending it to a team of focus pullers, and also just to the betterment of whoever's looking at the monitor at the back of the camera if you're operating the camera. But also, it's going to help you expose your scene depending on the values of that scene. So let's say you're filming outside and there's a lot of values, a lot of stops of dynamic range in the highlights, and you know you want to be protective of those stops that you know are primarily in the highlights. What you can do is set your ISO to let's say 1000, you know that middle gray is now shifted lower in the available 13 stops of dynamic range on your Blackmagic camera. And so you know if you have a properly exposed middle gray at ISO 1000, you're going to have, I think it's seven stops above that middle gray. But that's different from saying that you have six stops of highlights at, let's say 800 ISO and seven stops of dynamic range at let's say ISO 1000. That is not technically correct. You have the same amount of stops on your sensor regardless of what ISO you're shooting at. The correct way of saying that would be you have seven stops 
of dynamic range in the highlights above middle gray at ISO 1000. That's the difference. The actual amount of dynamic range is the same the entire time. So say you set ISO to 1000, you're outside, you wanna be protective of the highlights because you know you have about seven stops above middle gray. So how do you properly expose middle gray? You're gonna to have to make physical adjustments of your iris or your shutter or your available light. ISO is doing nothing to adjust that exposure. So if you're metering for ISO 1000, you're going to get a f-stop number that is different from if you were to meter middle gray at ISO 100. That is where the amount of light being let into the camera is actually adjusting. The readout that you get from metering at those given ISOs. So it's a little bit unintuitive to begin with because you're thinking about ISO uh, almost reverse of how you would think about it traditionally where if you want to protect the highlights, you would meter middle gray at ISO 1000. If you want to protect your shadows, you would meter middle gray at ISO 100 because the, those would yield different um, T-stop or F-stop numbers. You're metering at ISO 100, you're going to get a lower F-stop number. And if you're metering at ISO 1000, you're going to get a higher F-stop number. So you can think of ISO when you're recording in raw formats as just a metering tool. Have it a little bit higher and you're going to meter to prioritize highlights, have it lower and you're going to meter middle gray to prioritize shadow detail. What I haven't covered in this video are ISO values in the second dual native range of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. That I'll have to cover in another video. Also in another video, I'll show you some of the ways you can monitor exposure on set if you don't have a gray card, if you don't have a light meter, and you only have the tools that are available inside the camera. But it involves zebras or the false color and a little bit of knowledge of the zone system. So before we wrap everything up, take a look at these two different charts and notice how on one chart, the white and black point are actually shifting as you adjust ISO and on the other chart, they aren't. So what this means practically is that for the chart showing the FX30 recording in its standard non-RAW format, as you adjust ISO, you are actually shifting those white and black points. It's a very traditional way of thinking about ISO in either an increase in exposure or decrease in exposure. However, on the second chart, the Black Magic RAW recording chart, the dynamic range is absolutely consistent through that first section from ISO 100 to 1000. You cannot adjust an image that has black points by increasing the ISO. You can't adjust an image that has pure white points by adjusting just the ISO. That's gonna be it for this video. I know this is a very difficult topic because it challenges the way that ISO is traditionally thought about in standard formats and ISO still acts the same way in those standard formats, but especially as people start buying either the Red Komodo, the Blackmagic cameras, and they're working with raw formats, they're going to run into this issue of trying to expose with just ISO adjustments. And it's deceiving because you see a perceptive difference because middle gray is shifting, but there's no actual change in your white or black point. So I hope this video opens up some kind of communication so we can all collaboratively learn a little bit more about ISO and raw tests. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this topic. Have I handled everything correctly? Am I running these tests wrong? Until then, run these tests on your own. Let me know your findings, but that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for sticking around.